Okay, here we go. Uh, so, this is probably going to be a brief state of dev. Uh, I'll try to think of a way to get it done yesterday and early this morning. Because I'm not exactly, you know, good at these more formal ones. So, uh, things that changed since the last one. We have uh, highlight input needed in production fleeing. Oh, no, if, if I do this on a new one, it'll be e easy to set up. So we have a second pool. We're going to say that needs to make beams. We're going to go in here. We're going to make steel ingots. And we're going to clean them over. That needs production uh, ingredients. There, There is a uh, slight issue in here. Because of how... Uh, name population works at the moment with it being async loaded. The name of the ingredient currently can't be displayed. And I am now just realizing that, uh, yeah, you can't see because I keep forgetting drop downs don't work in there. So, one moment while I get a screen grab. Do, 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 do. So uh, the drop down now has an asterisk in it, uh, a tool tip will say pool 2 needs ingredients, but like I say, because of the async nature of the names, I find it difficult to like express a clean way to say pool 2 needs steel ingots. So I'm just going to flag it with an asterisk and it says it needs ingredients. Uh, that will change depending on what item is selected in here as well, so, you know, it's not uh, pants to use. Uh, production flinging has been moved to the pool config, as I can demonstrate here as well. Uh, one of the issues with it is that uh, there's a save button in here, but production flinging doesn't use the save button. I'm not sure how I feel about that. That might change. Uh, like the, the save button might get removed, and the name will, and uh, group might get set to uh, like auto update. We'll see if I get any feedback of that, or if I get any uh, inspiration myself. Uh, there were some issues with handling of overflow input. So when you have multiple resources going through, it would like just mess up the calculation, especially when uh, inputs were involved. Uh, those have been resolved, so yay. Uh, some of the issues with needing to do the little display mode toggle that have been fixed by virtue of uh, we're just taking off the guard, wrapping around it that was meant to uh, reduce the amount of render passes. So, uh, eh, I'm not happy with it, but it works. Uh, similar issue with production flinging uh, thing noted there. Uh, when you have an item on input that's not being produced, so more often that will be your um, like raw resources, but in this particular case, it could be using a floor as a uh, redistribution center. Because an uh, item was an input and not a production, it would show up as uh, negative uh, availability. So rather than saying it has zero available after being flung, it would say minus whatever. That's now been fixed as well. Deleting output destinations can trigger error. This one was a bit difficult to replicate, but I did manage to get a, a, um, a replication on it. So it was like, over oh, a new session, new pool, do the thing, do the thing, do the thing. It was now being fixed. Uh, part of the issue is that although the distributor was uh, self-cleaning, uh, the code that triggered the self-cleaning 
for the distributor is isolated to itself, not externally, so the distributor can't be disposed of. So, the rather than saying the function always returns a, or the getter always returns a non-empty array, it now returns either an empty array or a non-empty array. <laughs> Which is a bit weird, but eh, it works. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Load dialog soft lo uh, soft locks if uh, load fetch fails. So that one was for when you go to edit a um, an ex example save. If the validation failed, uh, it, it would like lock it and say like, "Oh, something went wrong while it was loading." Part of the issue with uh, that was the auto upgrade code for the different document versions uh, relied too heavily upon stuff that was current so you would have version 6 code running on a version 3 validation and then it would just go wonky and the soft lock is there because when this would error out it would be stuck on loading and then you would go to say like manually edit something and then go to load in again uh, it, it, it's well that's a thought that should get wiped on <laughs> I'm gonna have to make a note of that <laughs> yeah so that should get reset and load so basically when you would open the load dialog uh, again um, it, it would just not work so that's been fixed so it always resets the uh, disabled state as demonstrated, I forgot to have it reset the value as well. So, uh, dropping support for older versions of the document schema. Uh, this was kind of a lazy way around the uh, legacy version auto upgrade support issue. It is easier to fix it going forward than to have like four different versions of the schema to fix issues with. So I'll basically kick the issue down the can, but it is like that that's been done just to make life easier for myself. Uh cut expended name should appear in the sidebar. So that one I forgot to put the context dependent name uh in for groups. So on a lot of these facilities, uh, you've got warehouse floors. So it would show warehouse floor ID number. As you can see, it's now being fixed. Uh, switching recipe doesn't change the icon list. That is related to uh, re-render stock on all values. Fixed by having the guard removed. Recipe icon list should display in recipe selection dialog. Oh, now let's go with the global one. It's going to be easy to demonstrate. You read these shows. Ta da. That is mostly a, a case for uh, making it easier when I'm looking up these um, signs. So if I'm not sure what recipe I have on a given manifold, just knowing the name uh, doesn't work. Because the machines do not show the name. all the time. I mean, in this case it does, so it says oh, I, I am allying it. Uh, I swear at some point it didn't show that. <laughs> I might just be thinking of the, co the codex. Yeah, so we've got standard recipe, alternate recipe 1, alternate recipe 2, rather than it saying the name. So yeah, that, that's, that's the codex I'm thinking of, not the machine. Ignore me. I do a lot of things by muscle memory, not by actual memory, so like the, the, some of the processes are it murky in my head. Uh, so yeah, visual improvement. I can now uh, figure out what recipes I've got set up more easily. Uh, da, 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 da. Input dialog needs to have item search. So uh, I had input set to only have parts. So I only had the parts field in there. I didn't have like the rest of the code generated in the uh, production items dialog. This now has uh, search in it. There you go, straightforward that one. 
Uh, adding manual input doesn't trigger refresh of interface. That is related to the other issues where I just fixed it by removing the guard function around it. Calculations disappearing on load. Now this one was more irritating. So you can see that, oh, I've got it flagged as it can't replicate, may fix it already. And then I closed it, and then I reopened it, and then I was seeing it happen, but I was having difficulty having it replicated. Uh, this turned out to be a case of some of the functions I had in were set to uh, optimize things by disposing of the top and scan class instance uh, an opportunity earlier than they should have done. So a whole chunk of that code has been removed. Makes it a non-issue because it doesn't convert uh, when it doesn't need to. There are still some circumstances where it should, uh, but a lot of the ones have, have just uh, the, the ones that were in there have just been um, taken out. Uh, dialog header padding need adjustment. So this one. Uh, I made the uh, header of the dialogues sticky, only I didn't account for there being padding around the entire dialogue, which meant that the content of the dialogue would park out behind there. It looked goofy. I didn't see it being fixed. Uh, pure level recipe selection is not getting saved, so there may have been some date loss in some of my testing trios. Uh, basically, what happened was you could interact with the UI and set the recipes, but I just plain forgot to put in the code that uh, saved it on export. Whoops. Is now being fixed. Bloop. Bloop. Okay, uh, now for the intermediate number changes. So we have added the faces of token scan. So it is now a full-fledged uh, replacement for deferred calculation. So you can do all the math things, you can do the type conversions, yay. Uh, Rollup flagged a circular reference between token scan and intermediary number. So they now exist in the same file. Uh, it now the, the package now declares uh, exports appropriately. Uh, intermediary calculation provides no means of getting the calculation as a string. So that was relating to some of the um, calculations disappearing. So I would just load the uh, amount property into uh, the templates on the value attributes which would invoke the toString function. Now, intermediary calculation toString resolves the calculation and then returns the result as a string. Whereas, what I want to happen is if I put a calculation in, in here, like 1 plus 2 divided by 3, I want that to remain as a calculation string, I don't want it to resolve to one. So we can see in here, it stays with a calculation there. If we load in, we can see the calculation remains. Yay. Entering recurring numbers in the calculator has talk and scan generate x times 1. That had nothing to do with recurring numbers. What it turned out to be was uh, me forgetting that when I implemented interfaces on talk and scan, I just had it return the, the past value and then do the math. So what was happening was you would put a calculation string in, the cal like the, the underlying calculator code would run to a production calculation, and there's a certain part that does an infinity uh, recursion check with some series, and uh, it multiplies it by one if it's not an infinite recursion. There are optimizations on the other types, such that if you do multiply by one, 
uh, minus zero divide by one, etc. Um, it just returns the the left upper hand, not the right upper hand. Uh, not not the one, just just the left upper hand, not the result. Uh, so that wasn't done with token scans. That was why uh, times one was coming in. And then the token scan string coming up with ridiculously large results. This one was frustrating until I realized that if I uh, took this string and grouped the parentheses a bit, it made sense. Because the token scan and uh, other functions do left to right token scanning, it's not doing bod mass order. So according to bod mass order, uh, that should get resolved first. So that this would resolve to zero. But what was happening was it was resolving this side first and then multiplying it by that, resulting in a ridiculously large number. Uh, its markers closed, it's not technically fixed. I have a new issue up on the implementing bond mass order. I looked into it a little bit and then I've, I've just pushed it down the line because uh, it is a bit of a complicated one to juggle in my head. Uh, but the cause of the issue was that when I was resolving these uh, nested calculations, I wasn't wrapping uh, this side in parentheses. So now that I am, the issue doesn't get triggered. It does mean that if you are inputting calculations into here and you use ambiguous uh, operators, you're going to have that problem. So basically don't do that, you don't have that problem. Use parentheses. So uh, that's going to be it for the state of dev. I'm going to pop off, take a little break to play something else and then come back on and do some data interview later. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.